It's hard to believe that it's almost been four years since the original release of Ghost of Tsushima on the PlayStation 4, but with the recent release of the Steam port of Ghost of Tsushima, is the game still worth your time all these years later? Oh my good gosh, the time is finally here, Ghost of Tsushima has finally landed on PC, and I decided to release a video going into whether or not it is worth your time in 2024, all these years past its original release on PS4. That's what we're going to be going into today, and I hope you guys enjoy this video as much as I've enjoyed making it for you guys. And if you're new to my channel, welcome to Live from My Basement, where I make cool new videos like the one you're watching right now every single week. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content, but guys, let's dive into the video. Beginning with the setting, Ghost of Tsushima is set on the fictional yet beautiful Japanese island of Tsushima, which has recently been invaded by a Mongol army, which the game likes to remind you every time you look out to sea as you can see the fleet of the invaders. Where you will play as a lone samurai struggling not only to resist the Mongol army, but whether or not his samurai traditions are worth sacrificing to defeat the enemy. Jin's internal struggle to face the enemy with honor face to face like a samurai versus striking from the shadows like the ghost of Tsushima is also reflected in the gameplay as the player gets to choose how do you approach combat face to face with honor or striking from the shadows as the ghost of Tsushima. Which gives the gameplay a ton of variety and replayability as there are a ton of perks for each playstyle. One of my favorite elements of Jin's internal struggle is when he's hiding and striking from the shadows is the regret and guilt that he has of not facing the enemy with honor. Randomly in the open world when you stealthily take out enemies, your character will have a flashback of his samurai upbringing, leaving Jin questioning whether or not being the ghost of Tsushima is tainting his honor. Which is a great reflection of how the narrative themes of the game are reflected in the gameplay. Moving on to combat, which by the way is one of the best melee based combat games I've ever played. Ghost of Tsushima rewards players who don't just swing wildly at their enemies, but instead wait for the right opening using the correct stance against the enemy that you're fighting. The stone stance for example is good against swordsmen, while the water stance is good against shielded enemies, while new stances are unlocked by taking out Mongol lords within the open world. And while we're on the topic of combat, I would be doing a disservice if I didn't mention Ghost of Tsushima's highly samurai stylistic standoff sections. These showdowns are triggered within the open world by the player if you so choose and are absolutely awesome as striking down your enemies with a single sword strike never gets old. Moving on to how Ghost of Tsushima takes basic game elements like waypoints, telling you which direction to go to get to your objective and makes them stylistic and immersive. With Ghost of Tsushima, you have the guiding winds telling you where to go. There's no map that says, hey, go here and follow your compass. You follow the freaking wind. And the game has such complex particle effects so that the leaves and petals from the trees will get caught up in the wind and blow in the direction of your objective. Where most other games would say, look at your map or follow your compass to get to your objective, Ghost of Tsushima doesn't want you to look at other maps and menus to get to your objective, but just look at the game and the art that it's presenting you. Very few other games can make a simple task like checking a waypoint so immersive that it doesn't take you out of the experience. But it's not just the guiding winds that have unique and immersive game mechanics, as the way you change the weather in the world of Ghost of Tsushima is also unique and immersive as well. Whereas in most games, if you wanted to say wait out a storm, you'd either have to wait, sleep, or fast travel away, or something along those lines, whereas in Ghost of Tsushima, they've built the game mechanic around your character's flute. Whenever you play your flute, it actually changes the weather of the world around you. Is it realistic? Absolutely not. Do I love it? Definitely. Another example of how Ghost of Tsushima keeps players locked into its experience is how it doesn't encourage players to use maps and menus to find, say, loot and treasures within the open world, but instead relies on a mechanic where the wildlife of Tsushima will come to you, whether they're birds, foxes, they'll come to you and encourage you to follow them to loot, treasure, and side activities within the open world, which is just another example of how the game encourages players to just experience the game and not just trap you inside maps and menus. At the end of the day, it's the small details that the artists put into the game that make the game feel so special. Simple things like walking through the pompous grass, you can see Jin extend his hand and touch the grass, or whenever you're using the guiding winds, occasionally he'll pull a leaf out and let it be taken by the guiding winds. It's these small details that make the game feel so unique and special, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so much looking forward to this PC port. 
So at the end of the day, guys, is Ghost of Tsushima worth your time in 2024? Absolutely. Especially if you haven't played it before. This game is one of the examples that I like to point out of games being a work of art. It is a fantastic game. And if you've never played this game before, it is going to blow you away. Especially if you're a fan of like old samurai films and things like that. This game will not disappoint. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it for you guys. Because guys, I'm telling you, this game, this particular port has been something that I've been waiting for for years. You know, I, I remember uh, playing the original Ghost of Tsushima on PS4 right at the very end of the PS4's life cycle, and then I, once I beat the game, I sold my PS4 because I thought a PS5 would be relatively easy to get at launch. It, it, it wasn't, but either way, the first game I bought on my PS5 once I got it was Ghost of Tsushima so that I could replay this game again and of course I'm buying it day one today on Steam so that I can start my playthrough again on Steam and see if it works on my Steam Deck. I'm very excited. That's what I'm going to do right now. So either way guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.